What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John Place here and welcome back to Link's Awakening walkthrough. This is the color dungeon. If you have never experienced a color dungeon before, this was added in Link's Awakening DX. And uh well the whole the whole thing is that it it, it ran on color. Great. Which doesn't seem like that much of a of a niche gimmick now, but compared to the Game Boy and its very dimly lit green screen, uh color was a big deal. Anyways, the whole point of us completing the color dungeon is actually getting the, either the red tunic or the blue tunic. What's unique about the red tunic is that it gives you double the attack power and the blue tunic gives you double the defense power. So it's kind of like having a permanent attack up, you know, the, the power up guy, or a permanent acorn. By the way, that's, that's how you do that puzzle. You hit that, it changes color. If we head down here, there is a room full of blue rupees, which is very nice. From here, we're gonna head back to the right. Now, this floor, if you jump on any in particular tile three times, it'll break. And if you hit that guy out of the sky, he'll fall down. Now, you could jump over them, no problem. And we can't progress any further in the up or down room, so let's head to the right. These boys, you hit them so that they go into their, I don't know, protective shells or whatever. Then you throw them in, into these holes. Kobe. Nice. The individual rooms aren't much of a challenge, but this dungeon has a lot of mini bosses. And while it's not the easiest thing in the world, you should do it as early as possible. The requirements to enter here say you need to have a great courage and great power, but I've been able to go in here as early as the angler's area. Oh, and our compass lets us know that there's a treasure chest in here. Spoilers, there is. And this is a one-way door that when going through it is going to bring us right back here, and we can use our key to progress north. There's also this pathway here, and I want to explore that first. I believe this brings us to one of the mini bosses. Nope, another puzzle. You always need to make them squares. So that's the puzzle. And you get another small key. Again, the gimmick was color. Hey, it's our first mini boss. Boo, I'm no weakling. Your pitiful sword is no match for me. For this battle, you're gonna need magic powder. And hopefully you have a lot of it. So you hit him once and he goes from his electric cucumber form into his blobby form. He jumps, you dodge it, you hit him two times, repeat. You can go through a lot of magic powder if you don't time it correctly. And after a few hits, he's down. I actually need that fairy. This is a very simple puzzle. You push those two and then this one up. And let's open up this chest. It's the nightmare key. Sweet dude. Even though we have the key, we need to backtrack all the way to here and then head north that way. So backtrack back to this room with the locked door. Let's head to the north. And I believe there's a stone Henix in here. You want more power? A buffoon like you might as well give up and go home. So this guy, you attack him. He hops up. Every time that he hops up, boulders fall. And if you're on the ground, you get stunned, which obviously makes you more susceptible to being hit by boulders. After you hit him a few times, he starts to do double jumps. I think I can beat him without using my potion or my fairy or my magic cream. One more hit, and I need to recover. I need to recover. Ah, I would've got him. That's fine, he drops a fairy too. So, not a big loss. Head to the next room. Now you need to defeat both these guys. Uh, I mean, they can kind of just defeat themselves. They actually don't need to beat them. All you need to do is hit the switch. <laughs> There's a chest to the north, let's go there.
and with us already having the nightmare key, this chest is going to get us the dungeon map, which now we clearly see that there's something over here, probably another mini boss, and then a series of rooms to the dungeon boss, the nightmare. Nightmare boy. Oh, it wasn't. It was a puzzle. And did I... <laughs> I hit them and two of them went into the correct holes. Accidentally. That's amazing. Great, and that gets us the... I believe that's the last key that we need to make our way through here. I do want to go as quick as possible because I still have this power-up acorn. Oh, never mind. All right, great. First, we're going to hit the top center. And then after the top center, we're going to hit the right center, then the left center, then the bottom center. That was easy. In this room, we can get ourselves a fairy. I already have two in bottles. So that one's just gonna bring me up to full health. Nice. That means that there's a boss ahead. In this room, you could either use a projectile or just come here and hit it. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's not really a puzzle or anything, and there's not, like, a hidden treasure in here. That's just the room. Here we have ourselves... This is safe. The Hard Hit Beetle. And the Hard Hit Beetle's dome changes colors each time you hit it. That's the whole shtick. Step back, take your time. Just just hit him a bunch. There, I wish there was like a strategy to it, but like... Moblins are harder to defeat than he is. And to finish up the color dungeon, we go to the right, and here is a unique great fairy. She is the fairy queen. She admires us for coming this far, and the power of color. We get to choose red or blue. So the powerful red male doubles our attack. The sturdy blue male doubles our defense. I also like the color red, so I'm going to do red. Your body is full of energy. And she will now take us outside. If you re-enter the color dungeon and go into the fairy queen's room, you can speak with her. And we could choose to either turn blue, which will increase our defense, or green, which is no advantage. Or keep our current outfit, which is the reason I came here. To, to just show off that you have the option, so you're never stuck into whichever option you choose, which is really nice. And that was even a feature in the original game, so... If you don't know which one you want, don't worry about it. Also, once you collect 40 seashells at the Seashell Mansion and deposit them, you can get yourself a upgraded sword. And the upgraded sword doubles your attack. After doing some somewhat extensive research on this exact subject, it looks like if you were to get the red mail and then also the upgraded sword, there's not a lot of enemies that really need that much attack power to take them down in one hit or less. However, this is the only upgrade that you get to your defense. So if you were to go ahead and get the blue mail, you would have double defense, and if you have the special sword from the Seashell Mansion, you have double attack. Also, if you're playing hero mode, it may be a good idea to get yourself the blue mail right off of the start, because as you probably know if you're playing hero mode, you do take double damage. So getting the blue mail makes it so that you take an irregular amount of damage and then after your 40th seashell that we're going to be getting in our next episode you're going to have yourself the sword and if you just stumbled across this video but you have not seen my complete walkthrough series you may want to as i go through every single area and after each dungeon we go over every single seashell and piece of heart that you can get like example we just finished the angler's tunnel and we have 39 seashells which is pretty fantastic if you found this video helpful be sure to leave a like down below if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe turn on notifications until next time austin john out video to the next episode in the walkthroughs over there and uh the playlist playlist is up there in the top right and uh there's something else over there <laughs>